of that story on the flag line as it develops. Now, we talk a lot in this campaign, don't we, about people who don't care, people who simply don't trust politics or politicians, who have turned their back on the whole process, assuming they were ever facing towards it in the, in the first place. Not everyone takes that view. In the studio, we've just been joined by a couple of young people who are engaging in politics, who actually think it matters, who think uh, they're going to vote. Sort of unfashionable, this, when you hear what a lot of, a lot of people are saying just now. I've met them myself during um, meetings of a group called Patchwork, which tries to engage underrepresented communities in, in politics. So good morning and welcome to Temi Shigeru. Morning to you. And also to Chidi Amadi, both of you here in the studio. It's good to see you. Let me just ask you this about, about your guys and why you think what you do now think about it's important to get involved in, in all of this. You just saw there Char- Sajid Javid, the Tory cabinet minister. Um, his father was a bus driver. He made it as a banker, became rather rich, and now he's a Tory cabinet minister. What do you draw from that? Does that tell you that I don't know. It is possible to get on, no matter what your background in politics. Leave party matters aside for the moment, if you if you if you want to. What do you think? Um, I think it's a bit of a utopia. It's there's so many people who were told if you go to university, you're going to come out with a job and you could work your way up. Yeah. And they've gone to university and now working zero hour contracts. Um, it's all you know good enough for you to twenty, thirty years down the line. The Britain you you grew up in is not the Britain we have today. Um, it's just too hard. The reality is it's just too hard. And, absolutely. And Sajid Javid is, is what? The, the exception that proves a, a certain rule. Exactly. What do you, what um, do you think? Well, I, I hold a different opinion, actually. Um, so, yes, it is true that um, 20, 30 years ago, things were quite different. Um, I do think we are gradually moving towards a form of a meritocracy where uh, those who work hard will eventually have results. But there is still a lot of the discrimination, a lot of the bias which used to exist, which currently exists at the moment. So I think it's slowly beginning to move into a form, a type yeah. of meritocracy, yeah. where people like Sajid Javid, um, who have quite humble beginnings, can rise to the top echelons of society. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean Terry, you are a teaching assistant, right? Yeah. I mean, we know that you have decided that it's important to get interested in politics and to engage and to try and get other people engaged. Why do you reckon the people around you need so much persuading right now? Um, working in the school, you get to meet all kind of parents, all kind of teachers, people with great intentions for the country and who want really good things for the next generation. Yeah. But with the you know cutting resources, with um, lack of support, with you know parents who might have kids with um, behavioural problem, disability, and getting such little help, and the, the help they do get is getting cut further and further every year. I'm just like, you need to vote. You need to make sure that the government that comes in. Five years ago, I was a student who had all these dreams about going to university and I was mm. going to conquer the world. And I have to be more realistic with myself. I voted with my heart and not with my head. And I'm like, we have to vote. We have to make sure that in five years' time, we're proud of the country. Mm. You're talking about have. families and people who maybe didn't, didn't make a conscious decision not to be interested in politics. It's mm. just that they've got so much on their plate, just, just getting through the week, you know, getting the family fed, that who's got time to think about those things? And and I think for me, I try to tap on tap into that yeah. and show that it is. That's just what the more reason it is important for them to vote. Um, it takes just as long for you to log onto Facebook as it is to vote. Yeah. Um, and I think seconds in other words, yeah. <laughs> pretty much. And and it's a decision that lasts so long. Have you have you made your mind up which way you're going to go? No, I haven't. Where are you where are you wobbling between? If you are at the moment, I'm still undecided. We have um, the Lib Dem who keep reminding us that they're not the majority party. Mm. We have the Conservatives who keep telling us that, um, you know, the, the economy that they inherited was bankrupt and they've had to make all these t- decisions. We've got the Labour Party in between just doing the MC Armour dance. Mm. And <laughs> I, can't, like, I can't, it's hard for me as Are a you genuinely, genuinely sort of undecided between those three options? You're not yeah, um, leaning one way or the other? No, I've considered the Green Party, but... It's a fantasy party. <laughs> yeah. And well, it's a fantasy party. You call it. <laughs> I'll tell you in a moment, we're going to get a, a crowd of politicians in mm. in here, and I'm interested to see by the time you finish talking to them and then finish talking to you, whether anyone can get your interest. I mean, mm. you're obviously wide open to some persuasion. If anyone can be persuasive, I just enough. need a Coca Cola. I'm done with Pepsi, and yeah. you know, I just need a Coca Cola. I need a leader, not a manager. I need someone who's going to make decisions and has a 
you know, a backup mm. plan if we'll that decision fails. We'll see if anyone of them measure up to Coca-Cola. <laughs> and there are other, other fizzy drinks are available. <laughs> what, what do you make of this? I, th- well, I, re- I think this is so interesting because actually people talk about young people being apathetic. They're not apathetic at all. Politics is apathetic about young people. It doesn't make any effort to talk about the things they're actually interested in. And the things they're actually interested in are exactly as you say, you know, the day to day, how you live, what, what, what your hopes are when you come out of university, what your debt is, yeah. what job you're going to get and where you're going to live. What do you think, Sammy? I mean, Chitty, Chitty, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> I was looking in your direction. Ch- Chitty, have you, have you made your mind up or are you floating um, as well? Still quite undecided at the moment. So I'm still sort of between the main political parties as to who has to offer what. Um, as as Tammy correctly said, there isn't a party that's coming forward with clear reasons why we'd why anybody. Are you wants genuinely to vote for them. evenly balanced between the various big party offers? Um, or are you looking to another party altogether? Or? Um, well, I think it's probably wise to stick to some of the more established parties. With mm-hmm. regards to the Green Party, I still think they're quite undecided financially and with regards to the environment. Uh, I'm not saying those who wish to vote for them are in any way deluded. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, in terms of my opinion, I think they require more time to become more. You stable. sound like you're you're leaning towards the Tories, though. Really? Yeah. yeah can I can't yeah. ask that. Why are you saying that, Zoe? What's he saying? I don't know. Well, you know, as soon as we start talking about economic verities, you know, you can call the Greens a fantasy party, but the fact is, what's a fantasy is thinking that you cannot tackle climate change and expect it to yeah. go away. So I think the major parties are a fantasy party yeah, in that respect. Were you, did you hear the Labour launch the other day? That's mm. Sounded, it was all about fiscal latitude. It was mm. all about the economy, the economy, the economy. Yeah, so know, but this you're behind of, the times. But this kind of growthism, this kind of as long as we deliver growth at any cost, then we'll have a better society. That is an absolute pipe dream. Mm. But you, you guys are what makes this election so interesting because you're politically engaged. And yet here we are three weeks before the election. You still haven't decided how you're going to mm. vote. What I'm interested in is... What will make you decide? What will it be? And when will you make the decision? Will you make the decision, do you think, when you go into the polling booth and you've got the stubby pencil in your hand? When, when will you make up your mind? What will make you, what will make you decide? Uh, so at the moment, we're, we're with an organisation called Patchweb. We do a lot of things with young people, uh, running events, MP of the Year awards. We had an event last week where, where, where John was actually present and three MPs from the main parties were present. So it's those sort of events where you get the ideas across to young people as to which way they can sort of um, vote, uh, which policies may be in their favour. It's mm. those sort of things that I think will help to inform myself and fellow, fellow young people. Yeah, st- stick around, you guys, because we're going to have some uh, main party politicians in here. It's going to get very crowded, by the way. It's going to be more crowded than a, a leaders' debate on, <laughs> on, on telly on a Thursday night. Still lots to come. We've got Brian May coming up. He's going to be with us as well. Rachel Reeves from Labour's, uh, Labour's team. She's in charge of the work and pensions policy, welfare and so on. That's going to be, I think, going to be quite interesting. She might even tell us something. You know, I live in hope of these things. You're listening to PR's Politics. It's uh, 10.30. On digital, online, smartphone and tablet.